let me lay some cards on the table with a stupid question. Is anyone here familiar with the Sasquatch? Whether you believe or not, numerous people all over the world have claimed to have seen these creatures, or similar creatures. Big, hairy humanoids living out in the woods and or the mountains. Just about every continent has its own variation or myth of these things. I became a researcher, or at least reading up on others' research, on account of the increase of sightings in my county or the region. It started about a month ago, when our local rangers noticed a significant decrease in the deer and elk population, and an increase of their half-eaten bodies cluttering the region. Naturally, we assumed it was bears, but if you're reading this right now, you can probably guess that it wasn't the case. Rangers and hunting parties started to plan a culling, or hunt, to deal with what we thought was at least one super-aggressive bear. Normally, they wouldn't let mere hunters on the reserve, but in this case, several farmers found these carcasses on their fields. One was found in a barnyard. In retrospect, we should have noted that among the animal carcasses found, all of them had their faces eaten. We didn't think much of it. The local suspicions of a bear were seemingly confirmed when the four-year-old son of one of our local farmers spotted what he called the bear man climbing over a fence in his family's field. The man, part we naturally dismissed, writing it off as over-imaginative exaggerations of a child. As part of the hunting expedition, many have set up trail cams along the borders of the forests and fields, hoping to pinpoint the animal, or should we say, animals. There were different sightings, taking place as different locations at or around the same time, and despite our first glances, these animals were not bears, they had the face, hair, and build you expect to see on a bear, but their actual body was humanoid in shape when they stood upright. As you can imagine, there was a bit of a spectacle when these trail cam images were leaked to the town. At first, rangers only let the farmers and hunters know, but one of the farmers wanted some attention, so they tried to leak it to the media. Pretty soon, the town was up in arms about it. Some citizens were ecstatic, others afraid, others skeptical that the so-called Bigfoot has made this region his home. Some wanted the hunting to cease, maybe to capitalize on the Sasquatch sightings that have been pouring in. The less enthusiastic and more rational insisted that the hunting continue, rationalizing that these were in fact bears and that the camera tricks and perception issues were involved. Others thought the whistleblower must have photoshopped the images to play a tension hog, and the rangers insisted that these were mere bears, and it was voted up that they needed to be culled or driven away from the town's people's safety. Before the following, there hasn't been any confirmed aggressive behavior from these things. One weekend, a family made their stay at their vacation home, a cabin from their usual lives in the city. They came by every year during the summer, and certain holidays, other special occasions, to revisit their family living in the area. Now one day into their vacation, the mother took her two young children for a walk on a trail. She was warned to stay on the trail so as to avoid hunters, and it wasn't long before her little girl pointed out and got her mother to look at the so-called monkey people that had been following them. It was two, and the mother insisted they keep their distance from this wild family. The little girl began yelling and waving at the animals, who were staring at them from several dozen yards away. Eventually, one started advancing towards them, huffing and puffing and growling at them, and the mother hastily took her children back to the cabin. They left the next day, which is a good thing, because the day after they left, 
their cabin was ransacked, once again blamed on by bears. Unfortunately, that was the more passive of incidents. You probably roll your eyes when you hear the story of a kid waking up his parents in the middle of the night, crying about some kind of man with no face in the trees outside his window. I rolled my eyes too before I read the rest of the report. But what the report states is no laughing matter. There was in fact a man's dead body hanging in the trees in front of the child's window, and said face was chewed completely off. The body was identified as a local shopkeeper whose family lived just on the outskirts of town. He wasn't labeled missing, but his sister, whom he lived with, mentioned how he hasn't come home the night before, and she wanted to wait until morning before she pestered the police about it. Her brother's car was found shortly after, pulled off the side of a road in a forested area on a highway, not a quarter mile away from their home. It was here we decided that this animal, or animals as it were, is in fact a danger to the human population. They had to be hunted, and they had to be killed. But that was easier said than done. You count how many times someone hunted what they've said was Bigfoot. How many have been a success? These things have had to evade hunters for centuries, and it's not like it was going to stop that night. What they did find was that they thought was an oddly placed beaver dam, placed in the deepest parts of the woods, where hikers, rangers, and hunter alike generally don't go. There was a pungent smell in the air, and when they investigated the oddity of mud and logs, there were at least 17 bodies, human and animal alike. All of them were half eaten, but the constant being that the beasts have been eating them have a special affinity for their faces. Only four bodies have been identified, missing persons from seven months back. The rest couldn't be accounted for, but there have been a series of missing persons in the outer forests that extend well beyond the county's borders. None of the creatures have been found, but we did find a series of large, human-like footprints leading away from the territory and towards the town. That and dozens more of these dams. And upon further investigation, we could infer that these were not homes to these creatures, but more or less fridges to store their meals. Now comes the part where I give you a little folklore lesson. As you may or may not know, with all these Sasquatch sightings recorded, some descriptions may vary. For the most part, people claim to see what one would call a standard Bigfoot, just a big, humanoid, man-like ape but there are others that Sasquatch research categorize as types. Once in a while, people claim to see what they describe as looking more bear-like than man. The common name among Sasquatch enthusiasts of this type is the Gugwe, a name that derives from the name Kukwis. It is often described in comparison to the Wendigo, which should give you an idea of what kind of animal we are dealing with. First Nations told legends of these with the description of a man eating ogre like creatures. Not exactly the cute, cuddly, or friendly Bigfoot you see in cartoons or media, right? Well, as a matter of fact, these things are described as being separated from what most people would call Sasquatch. They are closer to being bear-like than ape-like. Among the names the natives had for them was the Face Eater, and of course, due to their appearances, the Bear Men. When people describe the Sasquatch, specifically their heads and faces, you get something closer to a human, gorilla or chimp-like face. The Gugwe has a snout, a 
according to witnesses, to be more akin to a baboon or a mandrill. Besides appearances, these beings were different from what was considered a normal Bigfoot. When they describe Sasquatches, they describe creatures that are rarely hostile, mostly docile, omnivores that generally keep to themselves from humans, albeit they are still territorial. These things were famous for their affinity of eating flesh, violent temperament, and will actively hunt humans. And like the Sasquatch, sightings of these things have increased in recent years, with most people passing them off as one and the same. In the farther north of the America, Canadian, Alaska regions, there are legends there too. There, they are referred to as the Genosqua, and again, often overlapped with the myth of the Wendigo. They describe how these things are nocturnal, how they lived underground, how they were not only cunning hunters, but efficient survivors. They got the nickname the Stone Giants by adorning their fur with mud and rocks, forming makeshift armor on them. My further research from a number of sources tells me that while they are more often than not solitary hunters, they do operate as family groups and rarely, if ever, hunt together. How they function is hardly any more pleasant than what is previously described. Some of my sources tell of how these creatures practice cannibalism to their dead, or when they are unsuccessful in their hunting, incest in their own groups, how in colder weather they wear the hide of their kills, and some even describe how they have a tribe-like mentality. This begs the question of just how intelligent they really are. One could almost call them evil, insofar as you can call a species of animal evil. Which brings us back to here. As with the rise of Sasquatch sightings around the world, there has also been a rise of sightings of the Gugwe, of the Genosqua. And I have had more than enough of reason to believe that we are getting a special rise of these creatures in my hometown. Four days ago, Schools were closed because large dark shapes could be seen walking or standing near the forested areas just off the school grounds, separated only by a small field and a chain-linked fence. When the kids left the schools, there were four of them walking, standing by and watching the elementary school, and had been specifically observing the buses before disappearing back into the trees. One of the local farming families left town in a hurry last weekend when a dog ran into a barn to confront an intruder. The dog never went out, and when the farmer investigated, he almost immediately ran out, got his family into the car, and fled their property without so much as a word to the confused neighbors. Days later, said neighbors notices a thick, pungent smell, muskier than anything that usually comes out of a barn. It was as if it was stuffed with dead and decaying bodies. The dog's remains were later found, just off one of the neighbor's properties. When the animals on his own farm started acting up on a disturbance, all that remained of the dog was a spine, ribs, and his mandible. Two days ago, a gas station just out of town was raided and ransacked. All its snacks were half-eaten and discarded. The attendant said he hid in a garage when he saw six Sasquatch walking onto the scene while he was about to close up. He described them as carrying the remains of a cat and a raccoon. Obviously, it was not enough to satisfy their hunger, and the food at the gas station obviously wasn't helping. The only snacks that were not thrown away was the meat products, the jerky, and the hot dogs, but that was about it. One became frustrated, and they attacked the smallest in their group and dragged its remains away. The attendant should count himself lucky 
that the smell of gasoline and motor oil must have covered his scent. Around the same time that very night, a couple who lived just outside of town awoke to the sight of two of them scavenging through their garbage, when one of the creatures noticed the couple through the window. As these animals began to pound on the doors and windows, the residents had to make a daring attempt out the back door. They had to lure the beast back after them and run around the corner, the other side of the house, to their jeep and drive to the police station. Getting the police to believe them wasn't a problem, considering the increase of sightings. But by the time they got there, the creatures were nowhere to be found. What they did find was what was left of the boyfriend's elderly mother, who was in the couple's care. In their panic, they must have forgotten her, as they have forgotten to close the back door. After these incidents, the town was afraid. Half of them wanted to leave this town for a safer place. It was decided that the hunt continue in order to deal with the threat at hand. With the aid of the police and park rangers, some idiots thought that it was best to leave them alone and for the town to continue to capitalize off the Bigfoot sightings. So the other night, about 60 hunters went into the woods, determined to put an end to the threat. There is 200 miles of unexplored forest in our parks and places that the previous hunting expeditions never reached. During that night, the forests were filled with howls, not matching the kind normally heard from wolves and coyotes, and the occasional gunshot. As far as any success rate goes, only 28 hunters walked out of the woods the next morning, the rest unaccounted for. There has been no confirmed kills among these things, nor were the bodies found of the missing hunters. Around the same time, the town was being evacuated. Only a select few families stayed behind. Unfortunately, a few roads were blocked by large boulders, and rocks, a classic calling card of a Sasquatch, their way of setting the borders of their territory. Who is to say the Gugwe, or the Genosqua, or whatever you want to call them, is any different in that regard? A few of the people blocked off noted dark shapes observing them from the trees. Many are expecting these logs or boulders to be removed by the police in order to continue evacuation but there's a few concerns that doing so could lead to a death trap with those things watching from the woods. Now, we are considering calling in the National Guard for interference, but I have concerns of my own. But it's not like they wouldn't have any reason not to believe us with the evidence we collected. Sure, they could help with the evacuation, maybe try to help in the extermination, but there lies the problem. I'm not a military artillery expert, but if the stories of the Genosqua armor are true, and considering the apparent failures of the hunter's rifles, how will their ammo fare any better? Best chance they got is fire, explosives, etc. This would at best start forest fires, or turn the county into a war zone at worst. And considering how bold these creatures are in sneaking near or into the town, I can't help but think of the worst case scenario, such as once again taking into account the increase of Sasquatch sightings. I don't believe it to be a coincidence that these coincide with environmental changes, deforestation, pollution, natural or man-made climate change. Last year, there was a chemical plant built for the next town on the other side of the forests. Besides this requiring a small amount of deforestation, months before this whole mess started, there was a controversy over them dumping their waste in the unexplored regions of the woods, requiring more human interference to salvage what they can. But alas, the immediate environment was considered too polluted for any animal to survive off the land there. What is an animal to do when their environment is destroyed? Naturally, they migrate, search for a more hospitable environment, especially one 
with more food. And unfortunately, humans have always been on their menu. I believe that the increase of sightings in my county is a prelude of what's to come, considering that climate change isn't going to stop in the foreseeable future. And with more and more sightings of Sasquatch-like creatures, I fear the possibility that cities will be seen as a new food source. At the very least, my county may be the first of many incidents. You want to know what's ironic? The only bears we've seen in this whole ordeal were among the animal carcasses found with their faces eaten off. Hey there, family. This is Tails. I'm glad you tuned in for this. Uh, this is one of many uh, Bigfoot stories coming to the channel. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe and comment. It's highly appreciated. Stay safe out there and see you next time.